everybody, and welcome back to the workshop. In today's Christmas special, I'm going to be making a present for my brother out of this piece of wrought iron right here. This is some 1897 Montana wrought iron, and I'm going to forge it into a bowl. It doesn't look like a bowl right now, but but it, but it, hopefully it will by the time we're done. <sighs> now I tried doing it cold, but that just won't work. This wrought iron is too darned tough. Now I know what you're thinking, Will, this doesn't look anything like a bowl. We're gonna change that, not cold, but hot. Now wrought iron has a very unique characteristic in that it has a grainy structure to it. It has a very grainy, wood-like grain structure. Uh, that means that when you bust it apart, it comes apart in these strings and strands. And it's a very natural, uh, very cool texture. Uh, a lot of blacksmiths enjoy working with it for the texture that it provides. If you forge it too cold, it just busts apart. Like if you were to whack a piece of wood with a hammer, it goes Psh! Rod iron does the same thing. So what we're gonna do is take advantage of that. We're gonna cut it up into pieces, we're gonna split it apart, and then we're gonna braise the pieces back together. But the first things first is to fire up the forge and get this thing heating up. I don't actually know how I'm gonna uh, get this to work out because it, it currently would fit about around my forge, diameter-wise, it's about that size. Uh, but we'll get it worked out. Alrighty, so the truth is that I did not cut off this piece to use as a hand hammer. The truth is that I need to make another one of these. This is a hot cut that I made about five years ago, almost to the day, with my friend Blake Beeson, uh, but it just doesn't fit in my new 400 pound anvil. And so we're gonna take this, I don't know what this is, probably three pounds of 4140, it's three inch round stock. We're gonna throw it in the forge and let it get hot. We're gonna put it underneath the big hammer and then we're gonna make it look like this. It's so cool to be able to have the tools, to be able to make tools. You know who says that a lot? Is this guy. That never gets old. up the wrought iron to forge it under the bow tree. That's hilarious. So while we're waiting for that big piece of 4140 to heat up, we're going to start forging down and starting to texture this uh, wrought iron. The reason why we're forging the hot cut is because we're going to be doing a lot of hot cutting. So I want to have a couple different dimensions of rot from this bar to be able to work with. We're going to do that under the big hammer because it's just a delight. You know, I did want to uh, cut it off first, but this is exactly what I'm looking for. Oh, it looks so good.
So here we have a big old pile of wrought iron all busted up. We've got smooth texture on the inside. We've got gritty wood-like stuff on the outside. Now I'm going to start off uh, using this 8th inch brazing rod and then in the middle I'm going to use this 8th inch brazing rod and then to finish it off I'm going to use this 8th inch brazing rod. Uh, I'll start off at the bottom of the bowl and kind of work my way out. I've got three different size piles here. I've got big pieces, I've got medium sized pieces, and I've got wee little baby pieces. So I'm going to start off with the, uh, with the base. I'm going to use some smaller pieces to kind of start to build it up in a little bit of a cup. I'm going to have to use some pieces to make a tri-foot base. The reason why I do a tri-foot base rather than trying to make something flat is that uh, three legs will always self-level and so that way I don't have to worry about trying to build something that's going to be perfectly flat and balanced and I want something that's going to have a stable base to it. So without any further ado, I'll shut up and we can keep on with the brazing. Well, it's starting to shape up. It's getting to be relatively bowl-shaped, so that's good. Uh, I ended up busting up a little bit more wrought iron to fill in the gaps here. I think the more material that I add to make it more round and more bowl-looking, the better. Uh, so I think that's going to be it. I don't think I'm going to have to do any more, but uh, if I do, it's quite fun to bust it apart, actually. So. about it. Bowl. Alright, we're going to get scientific. It's got some, uh, some, some ash and stuff like that on it. I just want to spray it down with WD-40 and see how it likes it. Well, with that, I think that our wet little bird's nest is just about done. I'm very happy with how this came out. I had no idea what it was actually going to end up looking like. But it looks like a wrought iron bird's nest. It looks fantastic. It's cool, bright golden bronze joints. It's got that amazing wood grain texture to it. I don't know how good it'll be for actually holding stuff. It's kind of sharp in there. I, maybe, maybe for like avocados, something with some thick skin on it. Ooh, this hurts to hold, but it looks good. Wrought iron is just the most unique material. It looks like wood. It splits apart like wrought iron. It's amazing. Uh, now, I don't really fancy myself to be too much of a philosopher, but I do wonder 
if this counts as a bowl or not, because it doesn't hold any liquid. A colander, I don't think, counts as a bowl. It might be a basket. I don't know. Y'all sound off in the comments down below whether or not this counts as a bowl. Because it can't hold liquid, I think it's kind of up in the air. But uh, I'm sure you guys will let us know. Uh, I am absolutely thrilled with how this looks. I had originally planned on wire wheeling this. Um, that being said, uh, there's absolutely no way that a wire wheel or a wire brush of any sort We'll be able to get in here and clean everything out with any sort of efficiency. Uh, that being said, it's not, I made sure to keep the inside fairly smooth so there's no sharp edges um, like there is on the outside. The outside is, is sharp. You'd, you'd, have a, you'd have a rough time. You'd catch some, catch some stuff rubbing your hand on the outside of that. Uh, but I'm thrilled with how it looks. It looks like a metal fabricator's bird nest. So overall, I'm very happy with how it came out. I think this is going to look lovely in my brother's home. I have actually never been to his home. He just moved. Uh, but it should look good anywhere. You know where it does look really good? I'll give you guys a hint. Not my head. So with that, I hope you guys have a very Merry Christmas. Spend time with family. Spend time with your loved ones. Give the people that you care about a call if you don't get a chance to see them. And thank you very much and Merry Christmas to my patrons. I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye-bye. Ah. <sighs>